So this is part two, where we look at some of the hidden products on the website as I'm transferring them all over from this old website version to the new website. We left off here at the bioluminescent Motixia millipedes last time. Moving on now to a couple different kinds of Narcissus millipedes. I don't know how my friend determined that these Narcissus were Narcissus annularis. It's a little weird. The two are so very similar. This is a cool one though. You can see the Nephila from Madagascar. Used to have a lot of imports from Madagascar back in the 90s. Not me personally, but lots of reptile importers. A couple different tarantulas there, uh, some different isopods, different Narcissus gordanus millipedes. Here's Oren's millipede. These came into the hobby, I don't know, maybe five or eight years ago for the first time. They were described and named after Oren McMonagall. Ornate velvet roaches, one of my all-time favorite roach species. Photo's not really getting any bigger there, unfortunately. They were cool, very velvety, uh, in the black regions there, and then nice colors that, in that bright orange offsetting them. Orange Corsair bugs are pretty cool. Uh, native U.S. assassin bug from the southwestern United States. Got a couple different kinds of Orthoporus here. They come in quite a few different color variations here in the United States between Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. These ones here are a little darker and browner than usual. More often we're familiar with the gold ones or the ones sometimes called chocolates or sonorans from Arizona that are a sort of purplish brown color. I used to have these Pacific Beetle Mimic cockroaches. It's been a long, long time. They have an interesting um, uh, process for reproducing or, or for the uh, mothers um, in the way they produce their young, that's different than other roaches. Uh, giant Panchlora, the green banana roaches, the giant form. Here is the blue millipede in the hobby, the Philippine giant blue, such a gorgeous species. I had these uh, pallid roaches for many years. I apparently sold them at one time, but mostly I just kept a culture of them and never sent them. Um, the Phrynus here from Barbados, as compared to the Florida species, you can see that the Barbadensis is a little bit larger. Pie dish beetles are always a favorite. Their bodies, their elytra, and then up here on the pronotum, it's shaped like a dish. And it's really interesting uh, morphological uh, feature, the way their bodies are curved like that. You might guess that, you know, water or something would drip down to their heads, but I don't really know if anybody knows why they evolved to be this odd shape. Pillbug roaches, it's been a long time since I've had any of those. I would love to have a culture of them again. Winter spiders, pink panther beetles, native Pacific Northwest beetle species. Sometimes they're pink and sometimes they're a metallic green. Something interesting about, and somebody explained it to me on Instagram one time, but um, a little swip flitch, a little, a, a little switch flips and suddenly some things that are pink structurally can become sort of this metallic green. And so this beetle appears in two color forms in nature with the greener one being more rare, I think. Um, here's a cool terrarium that I never actually sold on the website. I was actually going to launch a whole business where I was selling all sorts of cool cages for pet bugs. Um, and you know, with all these ingredients and everything in it, but um, I started another website somewhere along the way called deadinsects.net. After all, I had freezers worth of dead bugs accumulating as a course or a consequence of having all of these live bugs all of the time. Um, so I never, I never uh, got that other business together, even though I completely built the website and dumped a good year of my life into it. One of several businesses that uh, I've started and uh, didn't get around to uh, completing just because everything else got so busy. Uh, cool. 
uh, tiger flatworms. Um, I've had these in culture for a really long time. They just never seem to reproduce in numbers enough for me to offer up on the website. I have a culture now that's doing pretty well. Don't usually do anything with leps, um, butterflies or moths. Uh, all the diving beetles are super cool. I get so many requests about pseudoscorpions. Everybody that has a beehive wants pseudoscorpions, a culture of pseudoscorpions, because they eat the varroa mites that plague honey beehives. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there are any sources for pseudoscorpions. And uh, the culture we used to sell out of many years ago, um, it was oversold from and never quite recovered. A few other color forms of, uh, well, here's the pumpkin. It's just another name, slightly oranger version than the gold orthoporus. Here's one that if you're a millipede keeper, you may or may not have ever seen in the hobby. Um, the Puerto Rican yellow and black. There's another one that is uh, white, red, and black. That's quite beautiful and very similar to this one. Uh, a couple different colors of ivory millipedes sold through the site. Um, these rainbow tiger centipedes. There's so many color morphs of the tiger centipedes that I sort of listed them on the basis of how they looked. And this particular color form I called the rainbow. It has red antennae and orange terminals and then some nice coloration there in the rest of the body too. A little different than the blues, of course, and the more standard coloration of the tigers. There's another one, uh, well, they occur here and there, but in California, you'll often see them with pale blue tipped legs um, and paler blue here and there and the striping throughout, quite beautiful. Uh, Renatra water scorpions are super cool. Get them from Florida every once in a while still. Uh, stag beetles of various kinds have come and gone through the site. Uh, Madeira roaches, I hardly remember having them. More recently, I remember uh, the similar gold metal roaches. And um, man, those things, like no other species, just pooped all over the sides of the containers they were in. Uh, rough death feigning beetles, another color form of the salmon, ivory millipedes there. Uh, Scolopendra heros, arizonensis, uh, quite a few different subspecies, well not quite a few, a few different subspecies of them are uh, commonly assigned, but it's sort of loose as to whether. Sorry I got interrupted there with the phone call. Moving on, the uh, Texas Castaneaseps heros, pretty awesome. Blue form of the tiger centipede, Scolopendra polymorpha from Arizona. Get a lot of requests from people. Apparently these house centipedes are one of the best reported uh, control measures for bed bugs. And so I get a lot of people emailing me when this product is listed, but out of stock, asking me if I can collect them or make them available to them. Um, it's not a native species, and so I'm not a fan of them being sort of released um, even with in homes, uh, even though they're common across the country. But uh, there's just no way that they're going to put any kind of dent in a roach or bed bug population. Um, it's just crazy when people think that uh, control measures like releasing an arthropod like this is going to work against the plague that is happening in their apartment in terms of bed bugs and such. Uh, Skytody spitting spiders. Oh, this is a fun one. The ship of the desert beetle. I was trying to figure out what to name these cool beetles. Um, unfortunately, they never did that great um, in captivity and so. I had to discontinue uh, sourcing them. Silver Argiope, I took that photo when I was down in Arizona for the first time many, many years ago. Six spotted roaches. I'm not sure if I have those in culture or not anymore. Man, it's hard to remember. <laughs> uh, velvet ants are cool. Another isopod, snail eater beetles, Sonoran whip spiders. 
um, Spiris directus species one. I have a pretty good culture of these. I sort of always have them, but just don't tell anybody about them because I don't know. For some reason, I just, there's certain things that I, I have like uh, separation anxiety with, and it's the same thing with the spotted pill millipedes. Like, I'm afraid to give them to anybody because I'm afraid that they're gonna kill them and that uh, it will ruin my chances of having a great large culture someday by selling out of it a little bit too soon. Um, here's a Florida species of Stagmomantis. Stagmomantis floridensis, I think is the name. Beautiful species. Striped burrowing roaches, Tanzanian earthworm millipedes. These things lived like 10 years, and I had one for like eight years at one point, just waiting for it to reproduce. One of the interesting things about this species is that they can reproduce parthenogenetically, unlike pretty much every other millipede, which requires a sexual partner to fertilize the eggs. And so this was super neat. And it was a shame to see that last one die after never reproducing. But the only reason that I really had it and retained it in the first place from the uh, group of them that I had sourced that last time was because it had, during a molt, developed a constriction that rendered it unsaleable because it, it was a, a very unsightly, unsightly blemish, I guess you could say. Um, nobody would want to buy it. it. It had sort of an hourglass figure, I guess you could say. And so uh, over the course of years, it almost molted that constriction away, but it was always noticeable to me, partly because I, I knew it had been there at one time and uh, maybe it affected the specimen's ability to reproduce anyway. Might have been the last one that was ever in the US hobby. Tanzanian giant whip spiders, everybody knows those, everybody loves them. Uh, little jumping spider, tiger hissing cockroaches, which uh, Invertebrate Dude was recently talking about on his Instagram channel, uh, mentioning how they were uh, probably Princessia or the Princessia were them. I don't know, I've already forgotten again, but uh, he's the guy to ask if you wanna know something about that. Anyway, he'll give you an opinion. <laughs> And lastly, Venezillo dwarf pill bugs. I remember when I collected a few specimens of the Arizonicus, same genus, different species down in Arizona. And I do have a good culture of them going right now too, that I should probably feature in a video here one of these days. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk again soon. I could probably do a part three for you guys where I show a whole bunch of other things that were hidden here. Um, but anyway, let me know if you have any questions about any of these bugs that we talked about and uh, hope to see you here in the hobby for 2021 and for many years to come. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.